Hi, I'm Cynthia Masterson and I'm quarantining here in my Ballard Beat Studio. Come on in and see what I'm working on. Oh look, there's already somebody here. Hi sweeps. You'll see the stitch on a lot of things. Anything round, I always imagine it beaded. Here's a lanyard. Growing up, I always remember seeing a lot of salt and pepper shakers at relatives houses. Here is a little medicine holder, keychain. You can put something inside. I do a lot of those. I didn't do this one, but here's a keychain. Boomer Sooner. This is the four, first gourd dance shaker I made for my husband to reflect our living in Seattle and love of coffee. Can you guess what's inside? Here's a dance fan handle I've been working on forever. I swear, Cousin Mike, I'm gonna finish it. I've also done a lot of these beaded canes for family members. Um, I love doing them because they're so big and you can put a lot of design on them. So why do I keep saying this stitch? Well, I'll come on over to my workspace and I'll show you why. So what do you call this stitch? Gourd or peyote? Ask anybody and look at any of these books, everyone tells you something different. But what I'm doing, the beads are going one, two, three, one, two, three, dropping down one, two, three, before meeting the next set of beads all the way around. Now there's another style that people will also call gourd or peyote, where the beads just drop down once and goes like this. So here's what I'm doing, one, two, three, one, two, three. And here's another style where it's just going one, two, one, two, one, two. So the difference when you're looking at a design are these lines. With three drop, it's always gonna be asymmetrical. You can never get an even line. With two drop, you can get even lines. And you can see the chevrons look different in both designs. Um, they're both beautiful, they're just different styles. So here we have Navajo beadwork. It's more of an academic book, but they do have um, some history from somebody who's a beater. Here, she's drawn out her style, which is, I call it zipper style. It looks like a zipper to me, one, two, one, two. Um, she's calling it peyote. Here's an old classic from the 90s. And she calls it the elusive technique of the peyote stitch. And it is pretty elusive when you have directions like this. But she's doing the one, two, three, one, two, three drop. Same book, same author. Um, here we have it called Peyote. And what's interesting about his style is that he's actually beading in a different direction than I do. So his beads are going up, 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 up. Here's another one where they call it both, peyote and gourd. And they're doing the zipper style, one, two, one, two. It says peyote stitch, see gourd stitch. And then right below that you see peyote, use of in Native American church. And that's where we're getting that word peyote from. In Native American church, they're using peyote as a sacrament. They're using this style on their ceremonial objects. So what I was calling two drop in this book, they're calling this two drop where they're picking up two beads at once and putting it on. And this looks a little different. Here, they're doing something a tubular style. Um, but in this tubular style, it's meant to not be around an object. Um, it's meant to be taken off and the way that it's done, it has the structure to hold its shape. Um, if this is taken off because of that three drop, it doesn't quite have the structure to hold its shape. If you're doing the two drop version, it's gonna be a little bit stiffer and it can. So what's the takeaway from all of this? If you're trying to learn this style of beadwork, know that these words, gourd and peyote, are used interchangeably across many different techniques of beadwork. 
So if you're looking for instructions, you might find something that's not really what you're going for. Or if you've learned a little bit already and get some new instructions, it's gonna conflict with what you've already learned and be so confusing. Now, if you're a buyer or a collector, just know what you're looking at. Talk to the artisan, ask them about their technique, their tradition, their materials. They'll love to talk to you about what they're doing. And I appreciate you spending a little time with me in my studio today. Thanks for coming.